I need to find this what that does not show the it's this way. So this one is giving me the Why would it do actually if I do that in there? There's nothing I can do. What can you do? Nothing else.
गुड आफ्टरनून गुड आफ्टरनून हाय कुली हाय हाय मैम हाउ यू I'm okay in yourself. All the time I've been trying to check like I would find myself only. So that's why I was confused. Because I would come to the same stream yard. <laughs> yeah, I I decided to Okay. I decided to go live. Um so whatever we saying people are hearing us. So uh okay. you will join while we are live so that then um our followers can start seeing that we are planning to go live soon so they can start join then we don't have okay. to to wait so that immediately <coughs> we have passed then we get we get started so okay let's um uh, allow anele and um uh, thing to join and sepo to join Okay so we can remain I'll, I'll muted put on my video soon I'm just Yeah we can, can remain mute muted and uh, okay. uh, send a message that will go live soon and then allow okay. the others to join us Yeah Okay thank you okay sure Hi. Hi everyone. Hello. How are you? Green you. I'm good, thank you. Okay, we waiting for Dr. J to come back to us. She said we can stay muted for now. She's still oh. finalizing for a some touch up thing. Okay, okay, thanks.
Okay, welcome to everybody. Um, we are going to get started. I see we've got uh, 14 people already who've joined us. So I think let's uh, get started. It's already um, six minutes past um, half past. So let's, let's get going. Uh, I'll ask our panelists, you can put on your, your videos so that we can hit, what do they say, hit the ground running. Um, welcome. <laughs> Hi, Doc. Hey. Hey. Welcome, Anele. Welcome, Guli. Uh, we've got Lisiho on the background, so Lisiho will be watching um, the chairs for us if they go faster than we can keep up. So he'll watch that for us. Um, but yeah, so let's let's get started. And um, I think the first thing that we need to do is to introduce ourselves. So I will start. Uh, my name is Jamlile, popularly known as Dr. J. Um, that's an easy one to remember, so you won't forget um, Dr. J. Uh, but that's, um, that's what normally people call me. So yeah, so... We, this conversation really, the way it started, uh, it was a, a video that I shared on YouTube. And I was just sharing my experience as an undergrad when I was still at the uh, University of the Free State. And then um, also the experience uh, as a postgrad um, student and uh, how that has, has been and uh, some of the things that I wished maybe I would have known better when I went to, to university uh, and also when I made decision on what to study and all that. So then uh, we started then talking with uh, some of, of the students or postgrad students or my former student that I've interacted with. And then this idea then came about to say, um, let's have the conversations because there might be other people out there who are interested to know a bit more about um, what to study. So this is a really a three-part series. So today we're going to be talking about uh, deciding what to study. We'll look at both, uh, mostly the, the undergrad, we'll look at, uh, we'll explore a bit also on, on postgrad. And then you can share also your, your ex experiences, how you decided to study what you studied, how it panned out, and what are the things you wish maybe you would have known. And you can, you can uh, talk to us on, on, on the chat there. So what I will do, I'll give, give over. You can decide, Anilo Nungulego, who starts first. Introduce yourself. I think also qualifications are important, what you studied, why you studied what you studied. And then we'll take it from there. And while we are introducing yourself, I'll try to get um, um, Seppo as well to join in. I think he's struggling to join the platform. So if I, I, I switch my video off, it's because I'm just trying to get Seppo on. So you can, you can get going. Thank you, Dr. J. Um, Anele. Uh, they always say ladies first, so I'll start. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Nongululeko Sonzele. Um, some people call me Nguli, those who have, got a, have had an, a close interaction with me, uh, as the doctor has referred to me because she was my lecturer and my supervisor um, at VETS. Um, I studied in my undergrad, I did a diploma in marketing uh, with uh, Mangosutu University of Technology. Uh, but back then it was known as Mangosutu Technicon. So I see things have evolved now. And that was between 2003 and 2005. And then I did my BTEC with UJ, BTEC in marketing when I started working um, in 2009 and 2010. And then I did a postgrad with VETS, postgrad in management 
with Vets Business School 2015 and 2016. And then 2019 to 2020, I did my master's and my management master's in entrepreneurship and new venture creation. So um, that is a long and the short of me in my studies. But I don't know, I'd like to check with Dr. J. Do I do then I have to go? Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. I cannot hear you now, Dr. J. We're seeing half your face. You are using your phone, eh? Yes. Yeah, try to position yourself so we can see your, your full face. We see half of you. Okay, okay, okay. It's actually... A, a little bit more. <laughs> Yeah, now, but it's limiting me. Is it? Yeah, now, yeah. We speak. now we see you okay. perfectly now. Yeah, good. Okay. Okay. You were, you were saying, so you were was, asking me a question? I was asking if you then wanted me to answer um, why I studied what I did. Okay, now, let's, let's get to that uh, next round. Let's uh, just okay. first do the intros. And then we'll come back to what you, why you studied what you studied. So the intro now just introduce who you are and what you studied. Yes, I Anele? have. I've done it. Anele can go here. Okay. Uh, good Anele. evening, everyone. <clears throat> yes, thanks, Dr. G. Um, so <clears throat> my name is Peter. I'm originally from Brooklyn Cape uh, in a small town called State Spring. So I did my undergrad uh, at the University of Johannesburg. Um, I did a BCom degree specializing in human resource management, business management, as well as digital psychology. So that was in 2014, 2016. So um, I went on to do my honors degree uh, and master's at the University of, of, of the Bit Butters Rand. Um, it was in between 2017 and, and, and 19. <clears throat> I did both my honors and, and master's there. So. Um, I focused on entrepreneurship when I was doing my master's degree. Um, so I graduated in 2020, <clears throat> uh, uh, December. And um, so um, I think that's all uh, about me. I was about to talk about, you know, why I decided, why I decided to, to study what I did. So, um, and just say that we should, you know, uh, say that in the next one. So um, thanks to Dr. that's all about me. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for that. Let's let's go to Tepo. Introduce yourself. Tell us what you studied. Good evening, everyone. Uh, sorry, my mic was off there for a sec. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear All right. you. Okay. Uh, good evening, uh, everyone. Thanks for joining us uh, on different uh, platform streams. My name is Tepo Seku. I'm excited to be part of uh, the discussion today to discuss uh, how to navigate university life. Uh, I've studied electrical engineering at uh, TUT. Back in the days, it was uh, Pretoria Tech, uh, Technicon, and I then went on to do my postgrad with Vets Business, uh, doing a uh, postgraduate business admin. And then I then decided uh, the plan was to do my MBA, but then I, I ventured into the Masters of uh, Management in Digital Business, uh, considering uh, the disruption that's happening currently in the global economy. And that's about it. But thank you. Thank you, uh, Tepo. Uh, just yeah, to add in the mix for those who, who don't know me, um, in terms of my qualifications, I did my um, undergrad in um, BSc. Uh, that was the popular undergrad at, uh, at the time when I studied. So I did the BSc, uh, but I wanted to be a doctor. So 
but my marks were not good enough to be a doctor, not the doctor that I am now. I wanted to, the, the, to be the doctor with patients, you know, the one that gives injection. Uh, but that didn't, did not work, that work out. So I ended up doing BSc and um, with the promise that if I pass my BSc very well, then I will go to second year of um, uh, medicine. And those who know how university first year, first year ten normally turns out. So I, that never happened because my maths first year were not good. So I had to finish my, my uh, BSc and with no direction as exactly what I'm gonna do with that BSc. And I did it, completed it. And then after that, then I went on to do my master's in um, statistics which the decision also to go for that has nothing to do with the fact that I just got good marks for stats. So, and there was a passer, so I did stats. And then after that, then uh, postgrad, uh, after that, when I went for my PhD, now the decisions were different, but we will, and, and the things considered as to what to study were, were different than when I was doing my undergrad. But let me pause there. Let's go back yeah. to Nkuli. And let's hear how Nkuli decided um, when when she had to do an undergrad. How did she get to that decision? Okay, uh, um, thank you. Sorry, can I ask that if you if you're not talking mute, we're getting some uh, background noise. I'm not sure where it's coming from. So if you are not the one talking, just mute. Okay. Um, from my undergrad, basically, um, I am just going to give a bit, bit of a background. I grew up in the rural province of Eastern Cape, um, in the town, small town called Bizana. So, um, in that place, there isn't, at that time, there wasn't a lot of information about career guidance you know, you knew that you had to grow up and study and become, you know, a join one of the major streams. You become a doctor, become a teacher, become, a, 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 you know, a, a clerk and, you know, a policeman, policewoman. There was nothing beyond that. But obviously, um, um, because I had relatives in Durban, so when I visit Durban, then I would then get exposed to some information because you, you, you will know that ML Sultan, which is now called DUT, uh, is in Durban, as well as university, um, a, a, as well as Natal Tech is in Durban. So I then got influenced by interacting with my cousins and other people in Durban. You know, I got introduced of, on the other streams of education, um, or rather academia that is available in those um, technicons. So, and then, um, then, but I wanted to do journalism. I've always, you know, um, been inspired by, 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 by storytellers. I wanted to be one. Um, but when I got introduced to marketing, I realized that I also have a passion for people and I like the advertising language and all of that. And then marketing, in 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 its in its in its in its manner, it is very diverse. So it allows you to do advertising. It allows you to do sales. It allows you to to do a lot of things. You know, you can. And also, I looked at the job opportunities that one can be exposed to once they finish with this diploma. Then I realized that you could work as 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 PR. You could work as a marketing assistant. You could do. You could work in sales, which is actually, by the way, how my career started so then then i was um i i then ended up you know doing marketing and uh, there was no challenges of me qualifying and getting accepted um, in marketing i will pause there i don't know if i need to go to to the latest one okay uh it's, it's up to you maybe hold on you can come back to the post uh later um, okay. Who wants to go go next on the undergrad one? What? How did you decide? What factors did you look at? Yeah. Hi. <clears throat> Thanks, Dr. Chi. So, um, for me, 
um, I grew up in the rural area, so um, I did you know uh, maths and science in high school. So the only thing that you know I wanted to do after varsity is to go uh, and pursue a degree in engineering. So um, unfortunately, uh, the marks uh, for me were beat <laughs> low subjects. <laughs> so I ended up doing a BCom degree, um, focusing on on business uh, HR as well as industrial psychology, and. Um, so I couldn't have, you know, applied, you know, if it wasn't because of Sunning Foundation, uh, which is a nonprofit organization that assists township and rural uh, students to access and succeed in higher education uh, institution. So um, they came to our to our university to our high school, sorry, um, and then you know uh, brought us uh, application forms and uh, told us just to fill them and they will take them, they will pay for application fee and submit them, and submit them on, on uh, the universities that we are applying at. So uh, those were from UJ, uh, University of Johannesburg at the time. So they were paper-based, uh, not like now, everything is online. So we had to pay. Um, so um, for me, uh, I didn't you know, uh, imagine myself studying anything except, you know, uh, a, a science related uh, course. So um, so it's just like, uh, as I said, I uh, ended up doing a BCom degree. Um, and then I remembered, you know, uh, growing up, I always wanted to, 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 to be a businessman. Uh, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. <clears throat> so um, when I was looking at the, at, the, at the course that was available at the time, because um, I was rejected in engineering, and then there was still a space on on, on the BCom uh, that uh, you know I I, I pursued. Um, I look at the subjects, uh, and there was a business uh, management course, and then I remember, you know what? Uh, I've always wanted to 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 be a business uh, man, to be an entrepreneur, and. Um, I decided, you know what, you know, let me pursue this uh, because I already had the scholarship at the time, you know, uh, there was a passary already, uh, the guys find us uh, passaries. So I did that course <laughs> and then I thought of uh, of changing along the way, you know, doing, a, 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 you know, a science course, but then, hey, the course was showing at the time, I thought <laughs> I should just continue with the course. So I did, and I enjoyed it. I really did. Um, I went on to do, uh, you know, a, a honors as well as a, a, a masters was in entrepreneurship. And uh, in 2017, I did, you know, uh, found a business, but then, you know, uh, it reached me. It didn't do well, so we decided, you know, what? Let's just close. Uh, it was me and my friends. So um, that's 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 my story, and that's uh, the story behind why I decided, you know, uh, to to pursue the course that I did. Thank you, Doctor Jim. Okay, thanks, Anne. That's that's interesting. I think the buzzer is coming into play in 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 kind of like moving our decision to a certain direction, um, which which is very interesting. We'll we'll come back to that. Is the buzzer really uh, an important factor uh, that should make us study what we end up studying. So we'll we'll come back to that. Let's hear Tepo first. Tepo, what did you consider? What were the factors in play that made you study what you studied? Oh, uh, thank you, Dr. J. Uh, interesting story uh, by Anela. Uh, <clears throat> my choice was actually driven by my stream of subjects in metric. I was basically doing sciences. And fortunately, there was a mixture. Uh, I also did uh, accounting, which I also did well with accounting. I actually enjoyed it. I think towards the end of uh, my high school days. Uh, basically, I had to choose between accounting and history. So <clears throat> just like everyone, uh, even though, like I said, I'm from, I'm, I was born and bred in Soweto, uh, not in, in the rural uh, area like the other guys, but there wasn't much of a difference because uh, we were also not exposed to career guidance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. However, like I said, I've always been a problem solver, and we were always taught or told 
to study medicine science. And I actually enjoyed it. Uh, I knew I wanted to do chemical engineering because it was one of uh, my interests after reconsidering to become a medical doctor, just like everyone, because uh, those were popular careers that everyone knew about, either medical doctor, policeman, a nurse, etc. So, uh, unfortunately, mm, I ended up doing, or fortunately, I ended up doing electrical engineering. I was late with my application for the chemical engineering stream. I didn't even know exactly what it entails, but what uh, inspired me or what intrigued me about the course was the digital aspect of it, uh, the programming, even though uh, I did not have thorough information concerning that. And like you said, the first year it was hectic because I now being introduced to binary numbers. I just come from the township. I just see zeros and ones. And I'm like, oh my God, what's happening? However, <clears throat> I endured with the course and then decided, uh, started working, got exposure, uh, which basically gave me more insight about the course. And as I was working, I worked for a startup company. We developed a product, uh, robotic toys, uh, or robotic games. Uh, that's where actually my interest in business was uh, sparked. The entrepreneurial side of me, uh, seeing uh, a concept being developed to a fully functional product to a point where we did the marketing. Uh, that's when then I started uh, having interest in management courses and decided, let me arm myself because uh, like everyone, like under the story, I also had some business uh, ideas and business that we registered with friends, but it never worked out. S sorry. <laughs> it never worked out. Sorry about that, Doc. Uh, it never worked out. That's when I actually saw that uh, I need to empower myself with knowledge. Uh, adequate knowledge to understand what business entails in terms of finances, economics, etc. Uh, that's when I decided to do, to go and do my PDBA. Amongst the PDBA, I also did the MDP, uh, which is not mentioned in my profile. Uh, when I did the PDBA, <clears throat> it actually opened my eyes uh, as one of the models was uh, entrepreneurship. It was very interesting, you know, because uh, without thorough knowledge, we just take it, we think it's easy. There were some very interesting uh, topics or debates that actually opened my eyes and the ideas that I actually wanted to pursue and understanding the environmental factors, how do they actually influence your thoughts and basically what you want to do. Then came this new norm uh, before that's pre-COVID, uh, we're now talking about 4 uh, art. Then I was keen to know what this 4 art thing was, because I was basically in the digital or technological space. So it intrigued me. So I then decided, I saw this new course, management course at this, because I had to decide whether I do my MBA or I, I do something else. Then I decided, uh, let me do the digital uh, business course, which I found to be relevant with uh, the current uh, skill demands or in terms of knowledge required in terms of uh, digital transformation of businesses. We're seeing a lot of businesses that are being uh, disrupted by technology. So I actually learned a lot through my masters and I think that's about it. But the moral of the story is uh, my decision was mostly uh, driven by the stream of subject, the cost of the, the course and location, you know, uh, whether one has okay. a bursary or not, you know, basically affordance yeah. and location. Yes. 
okay, the bursary again. So the cost, the bursary, the location, um, all those things are coming in into play. Um, I want us to to go to the to the chat so that we don't leave our audience um, out. Welcome everybody from uh, Facebook who are, are joining us or are listening to us. Um, uh, we are live. We are happy that you've joined us. Seppo, can you mute? Uh, we're happy that you've joined us. Um, and uh, I see uh, we've got Zani there joining us. So excited to be joining the session today. Uh, we've got Peladi. Uh, we can't wait for the conversation. We've got Jess there as well joining. Um, so I'm scrolling down to look for those who are asking us um, uh, questions. Uh, I've got Mashas. Uh, sorry, Mashas. I hope you are still around. She, uh, he's saying his his phone is about to die, but he wants to be part of us. Uh, sorry about that. And we've got Tandanani there as well, saying excited. Um, so yeah, Mashas, uh, I, I see that you can always uh, listen to the recording if you your phone is is dead by now. So we will be greeting you from the recording if you are not here anymore. But yeah, thanks for for showing the the willingness to be uh, to want to be um, part of us. Um, there's a qu first question we have there. How do you know what to study when you have multiple interests? Um, mm -hmm. That's a question uh, from Jess there. How do you know, who wants to take that one? How do you know when you want to study when you've got multiple interests? Okay, I'll, I'll take it, Doc. Uh, thank you. The question is from? Okay. From Jess. Basically, from Jess. Uh, thank you, Jess. Uh, I think that's basically the challenge that we all go through. Uh, from my experience, uh, I learned that you need to try and find your identity. You know, the, the, the various tools out there, you need to do your research thoroughly because uh, and that's also the purpose of uh, going to school to be exposed to different fields or subjects, uh, choices. You know, they kind of give you an idea in terms of what is your interest or your passion. So <clears throat> try and follow which that you find that it's your strong points. You, you need to understand your weaknesses and the strong points. And basically you can make a decision from there, but in, in general, you need to do a proper research, identify what is, what's your identity. Um, normally people say, what's your passion? So I think that's it from my side. Thank, thanks, Tebo. Anyone else wants to add to that? If yes, I can I'll just add. also throw in. Okay. Yes, Kuli. I think what I can add is just one point to say: look at also um, what the what your choice that you make because you cannot have everything unfortunately at the same time. Uh, you need to choose a stream that allow you to fulfill your purpose in terms of do you want to to get educated because you want to get employed, which is mostly one of the reasons what, why we go to school so that we can, we can access employment and economic opportunities. So out of those interests, you must basically um, uh, you know, um, decide which one uh, or which two will actually allow you to get employment because I think that's one of the most important reasons why we study. Okay. Uh, employment. So, uh, Anele, you want to add? Yes, uh, thanks, Sodaki. Uh, just to add uh, on, on top of what uh, Tsepo and Nguleko said, I think for me it goes back to what you love and what you are passionate about. So, um, I think that can you know, um, uh, direct you uh, in, in a position whereby you can you know, follow what you love and then pursue uh, uh, that. So uh, if you are, you are having uh, multiple choices, maybe you can uh, look at the, at the course, maybe that uh, can uh, you know, focus on maybe two of the things that you are interested uh, about and that you are passionate about. So um, I think uh, you know, uh, that's, that's, that's uh, what 
just can look uh, for before she can pay you. She can pay you, pay you um, uh, uh, that qualification or degree uh, that uh, she wants to to pay you. Thank you, Doctor J. Okay. Um, thank you for thank you for that. Uh, yeah. So I, I think also one of the things that I also want to emphasize is that most of these things um, there is not one way of doing them. And, and some of the things you find that in life, uh, they evolve as you go through life. Um, you, you might think that you, you, you deciding to go this path, but things evolve. And as you, you continue, you find that there's other um, interests that, that uh, comes along. And I always believe there's nothing as important as uh, like sharing experience and our stories in how we went around uh, doing things. Um, I have multiple interests. I've got things that I'm passionate about that are from different things. Like, as I say, when I started, I was doing BSc because I was interested in science. And that interest in science, um, not to lie and, and to anybody that I knew why, what I was going to do with the science. I, I had no clue. Uh, but when we were at high school in our times, it was like, if you are a clever student, if you fall under that category of clever students, then you must be a doctor. So I deemed myself or I viewed myself as one of those clever students. So I went for, for medicine. But connecting the dots backward, I am happy that I never got it because I was not going to enjoy it because now I'm more informed in terms of looking at what exactly am I passionate about. I was not going to enjoy giving people injections and watching sick people. But the, 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 the information and the knowledge that we have plays a big role in how we make decisions. And that's why we're doing this, uh, this series, so that other people who are still to make the decisions, um, they look at it broader than just one thing to say, I'm passing this subject. It might turn out good at the end, like it did for me, but make uh, a better decision, more informed decisions, uh, because you know better. Like I think uh, one of the panelists say, do your, do your research, so that you understand a bit more in terms of what you are passionate about, uh, what is going to get you the type of, of employment that you are looking for, and what, what is the, the jobs that you, you're going to enjoy. So these things don't have one answer to say this is how you decide. I started with BSc, but I am now in business. I ended up in entrepreneurship. But one of the key things that I want to mention also, uh, slowly the world is changing from this one stream kind of, of careers. So that's other things that you need to consider when you decide to say, do I want to get into a career and study something that's going to put me in this one stream that I can't divert? Uh, if I want to divert, I must go start undergrad again and study something. So th those are things to consider to say, if I'm choosing subjects as well, am I choosing them broad enough that they allow my decisions to be broader than to be just um, as, as streamlined? So it's a lot of factors. The cost come into play, our background, we know as the panelists said, whether you've got a passary or not, we can't ignore that because most of us, we don't have um, rich uncles who will pay for whatever we want. So you find that there are a lot of things in play as we make our decisions, but we have to be informed and do, do our research as, as our panelists um, have said. Going down the, uh, with the questions. Okay, yeah, so one of the things also in terms of the multiple interest, uh, Jess, if I can add, um, I've got interest in stats, I've got interest in entrepreneurship, I've got interest in coaching. And what I did to make up for the other interests that I didn't have uh, undergrad academic qualifications for was to do short courses so that I make up for the other things that I still need a paper for that caters for my other interests. Because sometimes it's not easy that I can, if I'm interested in science, I'll do a degree in science, go do a degree in business and do a, a, another degree in, uh, in marketing and another degree in that. So you have to decide what's going to be my core degree and what is going to be other things that I'm going to get the knowledge using short courses and then and, and you add it like that. So 
it's multiple things that you 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 need to look at if you've got multiple interests and you don't want to let go of anything like i like everything that i'm doing so i don't want to let go of anything so then i teach um short courses um the other question is what happens if you aren't getting the required marks of your dream degree or career should you just give it up <laughs> this year I like maths, but ish, every time I get a zero. <laughs> <laughs> Will I give uh, it up? <laughs> that's an interesting uh, question, uh, Doc. Um, from my thinking uh, analogy, I think sometimes uh, things happen for a reason. You know, there's a difference between what you like and basically what you are actually meant to be, uh, like Nongo said, you know, we all have a purpose in life. Sometimes we just uh, driven by information or what our friends or status to say, no, I want to go and do medicine. But uh, to find out that I don't actually have uh, the academic ability to actually do that, you know, uh, so sometimes it it goes hand in hand with lack of knowledge but honestly i would say uh it's pointless pursuing something that actually uh is not your strong point like i said it's like trying to run a business yet you know that you actually don't have uh strengths and skills in that particular industry you, chances are you are likely to, to, to fail. If you are already failing, it's it, it's, it's kind of giving you a, a hint, you know, to say maybe... Yeah, are you saying that you must give it up? Is that what you are saying? Give it up. <laughs> yeah, give it up. Explore other <laughs> avenues. You know, there's quite a lot in the pool. Explore other avenues. Give it up. Don't waste your time. Okay, do we agree with Tepo? Tepo says give it up. <laughs> you don't have to agree with me. <laughs> I agree. Find, find an option. You must always, you know, you must not like put your eggs in one basket. Have option one, option two, option three. I'm sure when you get to option three, you you, you, you at least will have found something because if you can, you, you, you require to pass meds uh, by, by, by B and you keep on getting D, then you know look at something else it's it's wisdom okay and then what are you saying hey. no i agree i agree with that <laughs> uh, i think uh, the person can always do a short course you know uh, on that on, on mathematics you know or statistics there are always online courses uh, uh, but pursue another another thing you know uh, just just yeah just uh, put it aside at the moment and pursue other other things that you are interested in. Thanks, Dr. J. But, yeah. <laughs> what do you say about these people that share their stories? And, and a person will say, I wanted to be a medical doctor. And I failed five times uh, uh, before I could get it right. And they're telling those stories and they are now um, a doctors. They've made it and everybody told them, give it up. We are just not good at this thing. And they repeated it and repeated it until they got it right. What is your comment on that? Um, I, think, I think if you have the time, number one, to keep trying, uh, you can do so. Um, and if you have the resources, you can do so. Um, it's 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 look giving it up is not the only option uh, but if you have the time you can it, it depends how much um how much are you willing to try you know uh, killing this cat in this way and in that way if you have the time and the will and the strength by all means don't give up thank you okay Tepo, you're the one who started to say give it up. What do you say about those? Well, I know uh, giving up is not a nice word. It comes out a bit harsh. Uh, if you are certain about your choice and you know, like I said, you actually do have uh, 
you you have a calling or it's your purpose you know because sometimes other people are disadvantaged or are dis disadvantaged by a lack of resources i think those are typical stories where uh, a person kept on trying and trying and eventually when they got resources then probably they were able to to succeed you know so like uh to add to non kolelego uh if you certainly believe it's your purpose and you're probably not doing well because of lack of resources uh maybe seek those resources or that information that you think would make a difference and if you're still not doing well then probably you need to start considering other options but time is also not on your side so you need to yeah. to be cognizant of that thank you yeah okay so yeah i i think yeah that that uh, um that's those are good answers because then it's it's not boxing to say Uh, give it up or to say keep on trying never give up um i, I always say there's this context to never give up um so you it's important that you always have to have that context and take it high level everybody say never give up never give up and and you you don't look at the contents our our circumstances are different i, I always say um to my kids when they say what if i choose the the wrong career i say it's okay choose the wrong career find out is the wrong career go start another one as long as you don't rush to make kids and get married and then you've got responsibilities because those are some of the things that limit our our choices because the minute you've got a bond you've got five kids and uh, you've got a car uh, you, you can't afford to 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 try certain things so you end up sitting on certain things that you are you really know deep inside that i need to to try something else so i think this goes uh, more to our young ones don't rush to commitments uh give yourself time to try things and fail and try again it's okay to fail uh we rushed because sometimes of of black text and all that everybody is waiting for you to work you who can afford to be trying to crazy and failing everybody is sitting waiting for you to get a job and start supporting everybody so all those things play play a role in our decisions but if you are young you've got parents who take care of themselves they don't have to take care of you try as many things as you can and fail as many times as you 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 want and in that process you will find your passion and you'll be happy that that you try So those are some of the things that that needs needs to be considered in that never give up. Uh, if uh, I think will you put it well, if got the resources, then got the time, then do it. But we have to start thinking of that very early on in your age that you don't rush into things that will give you a lot of responsibilities. Then it takes away um, um, your, your 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 capacity and, and ability to to try. Okay, uh, let's see what other questions Fiso says exposure is incredibly important especially for people in the rural um, areas. So I think this goes back to the issue of uh, also researching you know better before you make you make the decision. Tandanani says what surprised um or what surprised you the most in in your first year or is a question what surprised you the most in your first year? what should first year first years expect once they are enrolled what surprised you the most in your first year one uh, person so i'm looking at time as well now one person can take that one what surprised you the most in your first year and then another person can answer what should a first year expects expect once they are enrolled in university or college or in any tertiary institution Okay I'll take I'll take what surprised uh you the most in 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 my in your first year. So I'll I'll, re, I'll talk about it uh, my personal experience. Um was that um as I mentioned when I introduced myself that I came from a rural area. So when you come now to this big campus that the type of place you're not used to 
the amount of expectation uh, that your lectures have for you, the amount of work that is expected for you to finish, you know, a, 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 a required certain amount of time and the way you're supposed to be presenting it. Because remember, as I say, I will, I will link it to my experience that when I studied in, in the Eastern Cape, the way of studying in a rural area was totally different. It did not necessarily prepare me for what you expect adversity at all. So that was my biggest surprise. When they talk about university, this is what they talk about. Expectations are high. No one is going to babysit me. I just have to hit the ground running. So that was my a biggest surprise. And I think mostly, uh, most of us, we get that uh, level of surprise. The amount of work, the expectation is so high. There's no one babysitting you. You have to, to know to hit the ground running. Thank you. Thank you, Nkuli. Another one can take the, 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 um, the second question. What should first year expects, expect once they get in, enrolled? Number one that I remember is that the bell doesn't ring. Um, when I, when I, I, I moved from high school and got to university, I waited for the bell to ring, uh, waited for assembly to happen. Um, in, in our time, assembly and the bell was a, was a common thing. So there was no uh, studying without that. So the bell never rang. Um, the classes, you had to find classes yourself. I got so lost um, because you don't have this, you know, like at high school, you've got one small little campus, a long block with all the classes. Uh, everybody knows where everything is. And then you get to university, you've got this big campus, you've got a west and a east and a what, and then you've got the map to find the classes. And, and you get lost. I remember in one of the classes I got there and the lecture was wrapping up because I was late looking for the building. And people keep on, and at, uh, at varsity also there's this initiation a thing that you get when you get there. And then you ask people, they see you are a first year, they keep on pointing you to the wrong buildings and you keep on doing that until you find the class and you find the lecturer is wrapping up, is done. Um, so those are some of the things that when you get there, you're not, you're not, like, you're not prepared for. Um, as Gulu was saying, no one will babysit you. Parties are galu, um, social, everything is galu, and everything is easy to do except the sitting and studying. So you require a lot, a lot of discipline um, when you get there. Uh, the lecturers, they summarize the stuff so much that uh, you, they give you this big text, thick textbook. But in class, the class is so short. And then when you get out of there, you've got no clue where to start from that textbook because it's so big compared to what you, you had in class. Anyone wants to add to that? Um, yes. Um, <clears throat> for me, um, so what surprised me, you know, uh, <laughs> I know this is fine, but uh, when the buildings at UJ, you know, uh, those buildings, um, they were huge because it was my first time, you know, um, being out of uh, out of, uh, of, of, of of the Eastern Cape, especially uh, out of my town, you know, to go to a city. So it was my first time, you know, uh, going to a city when I was going to university. So, um, and the, the, the freedom that we have, there's no one that will always be at your back. You know, you have to do your homeworks. You have to attend tutorial classes. If you are not disciplined, then, you know, um, you're going to learn the hard way. <clears throat> so you have to be disciplined and you have to uh, always show up uh, 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 for your lectures. You know, uh, um, attend each and every tutorial, especially if you are still, you know, a, a, a new student, um, you know, uh, and uh, that will help, that will really help. If you are disciplined, always attend lecturers, you can explore you know, as much as you want, maybe a second semester or uh, on, your, on your second year, when you, you, you think you now know everything or most of the things uh, uh, in, your, in your university. So yeah, I think, uh, I think that's it for me. Thank you, Dr. Jay.
Okay. Thank you for that. I think there was a, a, a request from Tandanani um, to, to Anele uh, to please repeat the name of the organization that helped you, that helped you out. Uh, if you still remember, the, uh, I think that was early on when we were introducing yourself, but then, uh, yeah, we're running behind on the questions. I don't know whether you yeah, still remember. Yeah, yeah, I do. So it's Tusanani Foundation. Tusanani Foundation. Uh, you can always go on Google, they have a website, and uh, you'll, you know, uh, get everything uh, uh, about them on that website. It's Tusanani Foundation. The office is... Uh, it's on record. She can okay. okay, thank you. Sanang Foundation. Uh, you can you can check, uh, can Google them, Tandanani, and and it seems like they still help students um, because that's what he was uh, she was asking. Um, Peladi say it is becoming a norm to di diversify your skills so that you are more employable. I think we've touched on it earlier to say make decisions that will kind of like broaden your your scope. So that you don't limit yourself into this one thing that becomes difficult to move left, uh, left or right. So most people now are looking at uh, diversifying their skills as well. So what you study, please, 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 a big, big role there. Uh, Okay, I got kicked out there, my internet. I'm not sure is everybody still there? Okay, I mm. see no. Also got kicked. Yeah. I'm still here, though. Okay. So I'm not sure where, where, what last word did you hear from me? Okay, let's get no Lego back. Okay, no, so everybody's back. So sorry about that. Uh, um, we got kicked out. I think yeah, the internet is telling us to finish up. Okay, so I think let's go back to Sfiso. Uh, Sfiso was talking about the issue of giving up. Um, to say that uh, then um, if if you you keep on doing something that you are not good at, uh, how would you love something that you keep on failing on and 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 those kind of things? So. He was talking to to the issue of giving up and having your mess that you keep failing and you you really you really want it. Um, and then uh, Swiso continues to say sometimes what makes people uh, fail uh, is on how to program. Um, wait, let me get this right. Or it's on how the program is delivered, uh, so it becomes difficult for them to to grasp. So it's just mentioning some of the things that you might find that you you keep on failing the mess, but it's not necessarily that you are not good at it, but it's how it's delivered. So uh, more reason than to look at at other avenues that you can um, empower yourself so that then you you continue. Uh, Refiro is asking, what are the relevant courses one should explore? Should you want to become an artificial intelligence Im implementation specialist? I think that would be more aligned with you, Tsepo. Okay, Dr. Uh, 
<clears throat> Jay? Oh, artificial intelligence. Uh, we're talking for our again. Uh, it basically, you, you have to do your maths and science at high school. And at university, you should consider doing your BSc in computer science because uh, basically to be able to do uh, artificial intelligence, it also depends whether you actually want to actually do the hands-on job, which basically write the programs that drive the intelligence to do whatever functionality uh, is, is, is needed, or do you want to drive it from an organizational point of view, meaning strategy in terms of uh, business decisions. Uh, but overall, in terms of the technical uh, perspective, I'd say you need to go and study uh, BSc in computer science. Okay. Thank you for that. Anyone wants to add for that? If there's anyone wants to add, uh, otherwise we can move to the next question. I'm trying to get us to get to all the questions so that we don't leave anyone out. There's a few still to go, about three more to go. Okay, so let's let's go to Apelele. Apelele uh, is, is going back to the issue. I think the issue of giving up, Sepo, was uh, you started a very big conversation here about the giving up. And I see Apelele says giving up is not an option for, for him. Uh, he, uh, I hope his name is here. If I'm not, uh, I'm uh, sorry if you hear. I'm trying to figure out the picture, but I think it's him. Um, he, he knows a lot of other friends that uh, uh, failed um, medicine, and and then they use other avenues, start from biological science and all that, and then they ended up um, getting it. So he says giving up for him is like a no no. You just need to look at better ways of taking one step at the time until you get you get to where you want you want to get to um noted the appellele um and then and Siki says i never benefited from career guidance so guys what what are uh when you were in high school what was your feeling about career guidance did you do you benefit did it, it kind of like directed you to the right uh <laughs> courses at university Okay. Well, I'll start because uh, I don't have much. I, I did not have have an exposure to it, as I said. There was okay, none in, in where I come from. <laughs> okay, so Nkuli says there was none there, Tepo. Okay, just to add on, uh, like I said, when I introduced myself, uh, we had this, uh, a subject called career guidance. Uh, what I discovered late towards the end of my matric was that our teacher had this uh, rainbow book. Uh, he had lots of them that were stored in the storeroom. And basically the information was given us, came from there. And like the other, uh, like the comment given, I also did not benefit much, but I felt that if the book was given to me to read, I probably would have benefited more you know, because basically the information was in the book, but the way it was delivered, you know, we were giving information in bits and pieces and it didn't puzzle up. So it didn't work, unfortunately, for me as well. Okay. Anele, did you get exposed to career guidance? Um, yes, uh, but uh, not that much because um, they used to, uh, to, 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 to be a career guidance uh, back uh, when I was doing metric, uh, whereby the, the, uh, the, the people that were uh, in adversity at the time, they would come and you know, uh, tell us about uh, the stuff that they were doing and um, uh, they, they were trying to, to kind of uh, <clears throat> Uh, get us, uh, you know, um, kind of uh, uh, think maybe uh, what what is it that we can do except just thinking about doing uh, teaching or becoming a police uh, since those were just, you know, uh, things that we're exposed to uh, at the time. So 
they, 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 they would come uh, uh, people who did or who were doing uh, things like uh, genetics uh, from UP, uh, 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 applied math from this. Uh, so it wasn't that much. They, they, they would come once or twice, you know, a, a year. Uh, so for me, uh, I, I've learned about you know other platforms uh, like uh, there's a platform called you know a great match. So uh, what they do, it's it's okay. The platform it's a, it's a, it's a career guidance series. So you uh, find you know uh, stories about young professionals you know uh, pursuing uh, their career dreams. I think uh, you can learn so much from uh, platforms such as that. And uh, there, there's a, another platform if you are interested in a STEM uh, re, uh, related, you know, a career, you can always go to Africa Teen Geeks, uh, I think. Uh, uh, so uh, you, you learn more about, you know, things like uh, uh, AI, especially the, the imaging, uh, you know, uh, careers uh, since uh, it's, it's, it's the fourth industrial revolution. So um, that, that's my take uh, from me on that. Thank you, Dr. J. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I want us to wrap up. Um, I know we've, we've booked up until eight, so I want us to just do the last round. Well, I see Tandanan says uh, Great Match is, is a great app uh, that you can use as well um, for career. There's one last question. Um, we'll allow our audience, you can continue to share your thoughts uh i'll take this one last question so that our panelists can have a a, a a moment to wrap up and give us the their few tips just think about two important things that you would like to share with our audience as tips when deciding what to study but first uh, there's this question to um to tepo about the research that uh, every time you talk about um deciding what to study everybody will tell you conduct research but nobody ever tells you where and how, and that's where the 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 um the trick is. So I want to 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 go study. I need to decide what to study. I am not sure. You are saying I must do research. Where and how? Thank you. Uh, very interesting question. Uh, I, I was just about to add. Uh, basically. Uh, Part of the research would be to actually go to universities, you know, uh, not don't be exposed to university when you've just completed your your metric. I mean, the go the gates are always open. You can go anytime, see what the university looks like. Uh, don't be like Anele and be shocked by huge buildings. Uh, <clears throat> in addition. Usually universities uh, hold, I think they call them, I'm looking for the, the terminology, I forgot, I think career expos or something like that, where each faculty would sort of present uh, their programs, you know, in terms of uh, what is it that they're doing, what are the requirements uh, for doing that particular program. Uh, what are the job or career prospects for that particular program? I found that to be much more informative than uh, the traditional way that it, it used to be done, you know, just putting information in the book and it being exposed to a few. So go out there, go to universities. If I'm interested to become uh, a medical doctor, an engineer, whatever it is, you know, uh, fortunately, we're now seeing these people in our environments. Unlike in the olden days, we we're not exposed to them. Uh, just one other important uh, way to actually develop yourself, find a mentor. If mentorship programs actually help uh, in discovering uh, one's identity and purpose, uh, and coaching as well. Find yourself a coach, somebody who can coach you. You know, uh, basically, normally it can also be somebody who's actually walked the path, you know, that you probably want or you have the desire to embark on. You know, go to those people, ask for information, uh, like the session that we're having today, 
ask how did they go about it, what problems did they encounter, you know, uh, can they mentor you, can they coach you, uh, visit the universities, visit the FET colleges, you know, try to understand what is the difference between these institutions and in terms of how they deliver their, their, their content and what basically is, uh, suits you. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. J. That's great. That's, that's a good answer. I think you've already covered uh, a, a bit of the, of the tips. Um, I see uh, Chandanan also added the open days, go to, to open days and, and career days and um, get to, to, to learn there. Uh, job shadowing also is, is one of them that you can consider. Um, and any, anyone wants to add that or should we do our wrap up and, and get tips, two things that you think are important that you want to leave our, our audience with that they need to consider when deciding what to study, either undergrad or, or postgrad. Okay, can I start with the tips? Yes, Kuli. Okay, Doc. Um, for I've got a tip for the undergrads and a tip for postgrads, or rather the currently employed. So to the undergrads, what I would say is that a lot has been said, you know, in bits and pieces in this conversation. But what I would like to add is that um, get used to the different career portals that are online, like um, where you will read um, about, you know, the latest careers that are that are that are required. Um, um, for instance, if you go on 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 your website. Um, on the internet and you tap you type scarce skills in South Africa in 2021 you get a whole lot of those um, and then business tech normally carries those those careers and uh, and 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 I know for a fact that the, 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 it's either the president will touch on them in the state of the nation um in in, in the in February of each year uh, or the Department of Education will talk about that. It's normally spoken about in the beginning of the year, between January and February. And then the, the, those scarce skills are normally would be, they will be published. They will be audited by the Department of Labor and they will be published. So at least you will know that whatever you are planning to study, it is in line with what is required in the job market. Because no matter what we, 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 we like, when we study, we want to get a, a, an employment opportunity or to run a business but, or to offer a service. But what, who needs that service? You know, because once I'm done, I need to set up and work or I need to set up and, and, and offer a service. Um, so more than anything else, just do your research online. It's always there. Go to the websites that will give you that information. For the, for the, under, for the postgrad, um, don't be complacent. If you, 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 were, you were hired by a certain organization with honors maybe in marketing um, or whatever subject that you had you are done, always upskill. There's online opportunities. Um, as Dr. J has, say, has mentioned earlier about herself in the interest that she's got. There's online opportunities. Always try to be as competitive as possible. And know that and um, with the with the with the evolving times that we're living in, your degree is not always good enough. You need to always do those short courses that are critical in the space that you add or the space that you want to be to go to in the near future. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you, Kuli. That was a mouthful. Uh, Anele. Uh, hi. Uh, so for me, um, I would, you know, uh, advise those that are in metric and high school, in high school, uh, from grade uh, 10 uh, to grade 12, to, you know, familiarize themselves with the, the, the grades match app. Uh, uh, it's, it's really important. It's, 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 it's great. Um, uh, and uh, start, you know, uh, uh, certifying your documents earlier on. Um, before you can apply, um, what the, the, the platform uh, you know uh, does, you can you can just uh, um, you know uh, certify your all your documents, 
uh, and then create a profile on that platform, attach them. What they do is that, you know, uh, they match your grades with the universities that you qualify for, with the bursaries that you qualify for, you know, and apply for you on those bursaries as well as universities. All you just do is to, uh, you know, uh, certify your documents, create a profile, uh, you know, and submit or attach each and every, every uh, uh, document that is needed, uh, uh, let's say, when you want to apply for NSFAS as well as universities. So, um, so that's one for me. And um, uh, the second, uh, the second point is that uh, reach out to Tusanen to Foundation as well. <clears throat> if you, you you don't have you know, uh, that luxury uh, of you know uh, having to 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 uh, to have access to a computer uh, uh, or, or or an internet, you can always give them a call. There are you know thousands of volunteers around the country, and they 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 they, they will you know uh, happily assist you uh, with your with your application and assisting you with uh, finding the bursary uh, um, uh, for for your studies. So um, that's it. That's it for me. Thank you, Dr. Kim. Thank you. That's that's important information for uh, high school. That's 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 very nice. Um, thank you for that. Uh, I didn't know about the app myself, so I've learned something as well today. So I'm going to go and, ch and check it out. Uh, Tepo? Thanks, Dr. J. <clears throat> uh, for me, uh, for the undergraduates, I'd like to say, uh, first of all, when making decisions, don't allow your future or your career to be informed by uh, basically the external environment, like normally uh, what the industry wants. I think that's one of the reasons uh, most people find themselves in careers that they actually don't like. With so much information that we have right now, you actually must drive the decision. You know, it shouldn't be the other way around that uh, because we've done maths and science, we've got an A or B, therefore it means you must be a doctor only to find out you actually wanted to be an engineer or, you know, so <clears throat> we need to be very, uh, very analytical when it comes to that decision making, you know, that uh, make as much research, be certain of what you want to study. And another thing is the education has been disrupted. Thank you to for our and thank you to COVID, you know, in a way, we've seen that uh, those that were excluded, whether financially or economically, there are now short courses that actually people can embark on instead of going for the traditional universities. You know, there are programs like Udemy and a lot of them out there that you can actually explore. Uh, your different uh, interests. So you, you don't have to be traditional in your approach or your thinking. Uh, for post-grads, uh, like uh, Dr. Jay has said, do not box yourself. Uh, you know, treat yourself as an entity. Uh, we've seen the biggest of the entities like Stake and Equals and the banking sector, you name them, they've been disrupted. Stay clinical currently in this COVID, uh, they're struggling. They basically had to go into business rescue. If that can happen to such uh, big industries, uh, who are you? So constantly uh, upskill yourself uh, to, to, to be diverse in terms of uh, the demand that industry uh, is consist, uh, constantly uh, seeking from in terms of skills and in terms of knowledge. So uh, otherwise, uh, chances are you'll be disrupted and be out of the market. So constantly try to find a way to, 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 to differentiate uh, yourself, you know, uh, and competition is quite stiff. We seen uh, that the market we are struggling in terms of job creation. That actually means that for you to be on the market, you 
you have to have something special. There needs to be something special about you. And that requires you to actually do something that we have never done before. So don't be afraid to explore. And so I'm saying, do not box yourself. Uh, do as much as you can, learn as much as you can, interact, uh, participate in discussions, uh, try to learn as much as you can. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, thank you, Sebo. Um, this brings to the close our conversation for today. This is our part one of uh, the three part series that we are having. And thank you for joining us. Uh, we hope this was insightful and is going to uh, be useful and um, kind of like help you as you decide and navigate with either your undergrad or your or your postgrad. Um, this will, video will be available on Facebook. Feel free to share with other people that you think might find this useful who maybe were not able to, to join us. And thank you for all the contributions, all the comments. Thank you to my panelists. Thank you, Anele, Tsepo, and Uli. Thank you very much uh, for taking the time and sharing your experience and, 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 um, and giving some tips in terms of how you navigated um, even pre-university life, university life, postgraduate life, and all that. Thank you very much. Signing off, Dr. J, navigating university life. Seeing you next week, same time, same place. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Thank you for, for the opportunity. Bye. Bye. <clears throat>